Hi, and welcome to the Cult of Crafting. Today I'll show you how to make conversions. I'll make four conversions, starting with the easy ones and saving the most complicated till last. But before we get into that, let me show you my fully converted Goblin Blood Bowl team. So, what is a conversion? Basically, it's an overarching term that means to make a model in a way that wasn't intended. There are a lot of different ways of doing this. Kit bashing, where you switch parts from other kits, like swapping out a head or a weapon. Even though it's a small change, it can be very impactful. And it's what I'll be showing in this video. Another way is to sculpt new features on a model, typically out of green stuff, like I did with the helmet of this troll, or this pogo stick. There's also scratch building, where you build something from scratch out of basic materials instead of kit. So you can do kit bashing and sculpting and scratch building and everything in between. But why would you want to convert your minis? There are plenty of reasons. Perhaps you need a model that doesn't exist or you just don't like the one you can buy. You may want to avoid duplicate models in your ranks. You could convert your whole army if you wanted it to be unique. And also it's just plain fun. You need clippers, a knife and glue. And you can get by with that, but I often also use green stuff for millipot or something else to fill gaps and so on. And some sculpting tools to go with that. Different types of files and sandpaper. A hand drill. Paper clips or thin metal rods for pinning. A fine saw. If you have any suggestions for additional tools that might be helpful, please share them in the comments. I usually start with an idea for a mini I'd like to make, or sometimes I just have a cool bit that I want to use. I start by rummaging through my sprues and bits boxes. Among other things, I play Orcs and Adeptus Mechanicus, which are both good factions for conversion bits. I'll just grab anything that might work for the time being. I'll figure out how they go together along the way. Pit fighters are gladiators in the Necromunda setting of the Warhammer universe. Inhabitants of the Hive who've been sold to guilders and often upgraded with whatever implements that'll make them more suited for the task at hand, like chainsaws, claws or drills. I'll transform a pile of pits into some warriors ready to win honor and glory in the fighting pits of Necromunda, or at least provide an afternoon of light entertainment for the rich and powerful guilders of the Hive City. These old Chaos Cultists from the Dark Vengeance box actually already look like they belong in Necromunda. I'll take this guy and add a few bits to make him fit for fights. I start by cutting off the barrel of his flamethrower, then I take an Orc Big Chopper and remove the handle so there's only the fun parts left. Once in a while you run into the problem that the surfaces you're trying to glue together aren't suited for it. Perhaps because of too small an area size, or maybe you're gluing fragile or heavy materials together. In that case you can connect them using a pin. When you're pinning a miniature, all you have to do is drill a hole in one of the bits. I'm using a 1mm drill. Make a pin by cutting out the length of a paper clip, put it into the pin hole, and use that to measure out where it should go into the other bit, and then drill a hole in that. Once you've made sure the two parts match up the way you want them to, you can glue them together with super glue. Usually, you don't have to be completely accurate. You can expand the holes to make some wiggle room, so they'll line up better. You might need to do a little filing afterwards if you want them to match up perfectly. The flamethrower came with a backpack, but apparently I already used that for another conversion at some point, so I'll just postpone that problem and grab some gas tanks from an Imperial Guard kit. Of course, the hose doesn't line up with this backpack, so I'll try to carefully bend it and hope it won't snap. Success! This one is going to be a simple head swap. I start by cutting out the bits we need from the Witch Elves kit and assembling all the parts except for the head, which we don't need. This Skitari backpack looks like it'll fit her nicely and give the conversion a bit more of a futuristic flavor. I just have to trim off some of the cables, and I'll flatten her back so the backpack can sit flat. Is it just me, or does this head remind you of anyone? No, that's not gonna work. Of course you don't need to use bits from Games Workshop. There are plenty of miniature companies that sell them, and there's 3D printing too. 
A couple of years ago I bought some heads from statuesque miniatures that might work in this case. Let's try this shouty one. I filed down the neck of both the body and the head and then spent a good 20 minutes trying to glue them together, which was almost impossible because there was next to no space to hold the head in place between the arms, even using tweezers. Eventually I caved and got out the millipod. I took a tiny ball and squished it on the neck and then I simply pushed the head into the millipod. The millipod is somewhat sticky so I'll keep the head in place while I trim away the excess. I want to give a shout out to the very nice people who were first to join my Patreon. Special thanks to Cap, Matthew Brown, Duo Tan, Jesper Karkov, Based Rex, Diego Flores, Stud Fox, Nikolai Lungsu and Daniel V. Finally I glue on the backpack. This looks pretty cool. Let's do a couple more. I really didn't have much of a plan with this little goblin squick herder. I just thought that the robe and armor looked cool and that with a head swap and a different weapon he might look interesting. For the weapon I took an orc chopper and chopped off the hand. Then I cut off the end of the stick he's holding. There wasn't much surface area to glue together so I drilled a hole for the stick in the chopper and glued them together. Since I didn't use an Adeptus Mechanicus head for the assassin I thought I'd use one for this guy. To fix the head and give the guy a neck I added a ball of middle pot on his shoulder and pressed the head into the putty like before. Then I started removing the excess millipod and I went back and forth making adjustments until I was satisfied. Finally I used a paintbrush to smooth out the millipod with some water. There wasn't much trial and error with this guy, everything pretty much fit together on the first try. I quite like the idea of this little guy running around like a madman swinging a huge chainsaw attached to a weedy twig. I'm guessing he probably won't last long in the fighting pits. I had the idea of using this orc runt hurt as the basis of a conversion. This guy is holding a squig in his left hand but we are gonna swap that out. I use my cutters to remove the main bulk of the squig and then I use my knife to clean up the rest. In his right hand this model has a catch pole but I think it'll look cooler if I swap out his arm and the stick for a mechanical arm. I believe this piece is from an old imperial guard sentinel that coincidentally had the chainsaw that I used for the goblin loony I showed earlier. I cut off some bits from the catch pole and file it down to make a flat surface. Then I use plastic glue to connect the two pieces. Plastic glue gives me a little more work time than super glue so I can make sure the two pieces line up properly. Looks like this will fit nicely. I'll wait till later to glue this in place though so I can make sure that everything will fit. I'll use this head from a tech priest Dominus. To make it fit I'll just remove the neck from the orc body and then I'll do the same thing for the head. Nice clean cuts on both parts. Let's put an old man's head on the shoulders of this ghoul body. That won't be horrific at all. I'm going to do a bit of surgery on this little fella. I started with forgetting to turn on the camera while I cut off his arms with my knife. To make sure everything will fit I want to attach the ghoul to the handler before I put everything else together. When I find the right height for the arm I shave down some of the spikes on the ghoul's back so the hand can fit. Then I glue the hand to the ghoul. I proceed to attach the handler's other arm. And then the head. Looking good so far. Now it's time for the ghoul to get ahead. Like previously I use milliput which I use to fill the gaps and blend the neck with the head. I remove a few details that I don't like and make a couple of dents in the blades. Then I glue the arms in place and that was it for those guys. The pile of pits has been transformed into a band of pit fighters ready for battle. There was a lot less dismemberment than one could hope for, but I'm sure that after a couple of trips to the fighting pits, they'll be prepped for new modifications. If you want to join the cult, head on over to Patreon and sign up. Thank you so much for watching, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.